Dear brothers and sisters, praise the Lord. It's time to read the Bible again. This week we are studying Matthew chapter nine. Matthew chapter eight and nine record recorded ten miracles performed by Jesus. We can divide them into four groups. In the second group of miracles, we mentioned it last week that Matthew wanted to reveal that Jesus is the coming King. Therefore, he specifically mentions three miracles to illustrate Jesus' authority. First, he had the authority over the winds and the sea. Secondly, he had the authority to release men who were possessed by demons. And chapter nine, verses one through eight, recorded the third authority. That is, he has the authority to forgive sins. Jesus heals a paral a paralytic. This miracle, uh, was recorded, uh, besides in Matthew chapter nine, verses one through eight, also recorded in Mark. Uh, chapter two, verse one through twelve, and Luke, chapter five, verses seventeen to twenty six. Mark and Luke's records were both right after Jesus' call to Peter, so this miracle should be should happen at an earlier time, but Matthew specifically put it at the last one. Uh, in the second group of the miracles, because according to the order of the truths, the authority to forgive sin is the most important authority. It's more important than Jesus can calm down the wind and the sea. It also more important than Jesus chase out many demons from the two demon possessed men, in a gentile region. Matthew had this. Uh, particular particular purpose in such an arrangement, because he wanted to introduce Jesus as the King of the Kingdom of Heaven. He come. He came not only to heal the sick, sick, and to chase out the demons. The biggest blessing he came, uh, to give men is that he has the authority to forgive sin. That's read chapter nine, verse one. So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. This says that Jesus got into a boat again, from Gadarene,、uh, crossed the Sea of Galilee, and returned to Capernaum, to his own town. During this time, Jesus' ministry was centered around Capernaum. Capernaum means the village of consolation. Jesus returned to a Jewish dwelling place again. Verse two. Then behold, some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, "Son, be of good cheer." Uh, your sins are forgiven. As usual, Matthew was very concise and only used a few words to describe this miracle. If you read Mark chapter two, Mark used five verses to describe this、uh, this miracle. This matter was very dramatic. Jesus was in a house. Many gathered there to listen to him. This paralyzed man's friends. Could not come to Jesus for there's no room left. They carried the paralyzed man up to the roof and made an opening above Jesus and lowered the paralyzed man down before Jesus. They pay a huge price to see Jesus, but Matthew did not mention any of these details. We must respect Matthew's perspective. Because here he wanted to emphasize on Jesus's authority to forgive sins, he's not willing to lose this focus with too many details. So we'll see this according to Matthew's record. There's a man who's paralyzed. He had no ability to walk. He either sit or lying on a mat all day long. Lying on the mat seemingly relatively comfortable, but it's. It's his whole life. He could not live leave his mat, even though his situation was very restricted. Mark said, 
that he had four good friends. They carried him and brought him to Jesus. Jesus saw their faith, that is,、um, the faith that they hope、uh, this paralyzed man can be healed. They also believed that Jesus can heal him and would be willing to heal him. They had this collective faith. They also had、uh, their faith in their action. They carried their paralyzed friend to Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, today you can be in the church life, enjoying everything Jesus has prepared for you. Was it because you have some friends who carry you to the church? In every Christian's life, in their experiences, most likely there was someone or some people have paid the price for his salvation. Jesus not only sees your faith. But also those who preach the gospel to you, who lead you into the church life, Jesus saw their faith. So he said to the par- paralytic, "Son, your sins are forgiven." Jesus looked at him and knew his true condition in his heart. He had no rest because he's restricted in his movements. And more or less, he also knew that the reason he had no rest in his heart was not because his movements were res- restricted, but because his problem of sin has not been resolved yet. So Jesus got to the bottom of his problem and said, "Your sins are forgiven." What Jesus said to him probably was not what he or his friends expected. Jesus does not deal with the problem on the surface only, but to deal with the root of the problem. We need to go all the way back to when Adam and Eve were made and placed in the Garden of Eden. How they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and where、uh, that they should not eat. So sin and death came into the world because of Adam's sin, and the wages of sin is death. That's why we have sickness and we have death today. The purpose of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came to the earth. Angel told Joseph in Matthew chapter one verse twenty one, "She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins." Jesus came to the world, and those who belong to him were all dead in transgressions and sins. Jesus came to save them from their sins. Hebrew chapter nine verse twenty two also tells us, "Without the shedding of blood." There is no forgiveness of sin. Jesus knew this is the purpose of him coming to the world. This is also why in John chapter one verse twenty nine, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, "Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He will pay the price with his life and shed his blood, so man's sin." Man's sins can be forgiven. Jesus saw the faith of the paralyzed man and his friends, and immediately gave them the most important promise: "Your sins are forgiven." Verse three. And at once, some of the scribes said within said within themselves, "This man is blaspheming." Scribes are those people who. Who knew the Bible? They were respected in the Jewish society and with high social standing. In their knowledge, only God has the authority to forgive sins. Therefore, when they heard Jesus said, "Your sins are forgiven," then they、um, they concluded that Jesus was blaspheming, and did not did not know Jesus was the Son of God. And of course, they did not understand that Jesus took the form of a man in order to deal with man's problem with sin once and for all. These scribes they were thinking like this within themselves. Verse four. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, God knows everything in our thoughts. So Jesus answered directly to what they did not say. Actually, Jesus specifically opened the door for. Open a door for them, in order to answer their doubts.、Uh, he said, 
Why do you think evil in your hearts? The reason why they think Jesus was blaspheming was because they had an evil heart of unbelief. Hebrew chapter three verse twelve says, "Beware, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God." To the paralytic and his friends, they believe they were willing to pay the price to carry the man to Jesus. But these scribes, they had high social standing in the Jewish society. They were also among the crowd. They were there with judgmental attitude and with the evil heart of unbelief, and they depart from the living God. Jesus, on the one hand, pointed out their unbelief. On the other hand, he asked them a very challenging question. Verse five: For which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say, arise and walk? These scribes knew it's God's authority for uh to forgive sins. To get a paralyzed man to get up and walk is. An exhibition of man's power. Both of these two options were very difficult. Jesus asked them, "Which one is easier?" There is nothing impossible with God, and to this, and to these scribes, these two are both difficult. But if they really have to pick one, forgiveness of sin is a matter of inward matter. Man cannot see it, but to have a parallel. Paralyzed men arise and walk. Everyone can see. There is no room to、uh, fake it. So in,、uh, instinctively, they thought it's more.、Um, Difficult to make a paralyzed man arise and walk. Therefore, contrary to their logic, Jesus come continue to say, verse six. But that you may know that the son,、uh, the son of man, has power on earth to to forgive sins. Then he said to the par paralytic, "Arise, take your mat, and go home." Jesus accomplished the more difficult job in their logic, to let them know that the son of man has the authority to forgive sins. He told the、uh, paralytic to arise and take his mat and go home. To Jesus, forgiveness of sin is the fundamental. To make the paralytic arise and walk is expression. Therefore, he said to them, "Your sins are forgiven." First, then ask him to get up and walk. For Jesus knew it clearly that authority without the power is. Incompetent, and the power without authority is illegal. Therefore, he needs to resolve man's root problem, that is sin. Then to command man to rise, to rise up and walk. Verse seven. And he arose and departed to his house. The gospel of the kingdom of heaven is to forgive man's sin first. Then to command you to get up and walk. Even though during our gospel preaching, many seekers have many different needs, so they come to God. But the order and how we preach the gospel must be correct. Authority first, and ability later. Man's problem with sin must be resolved first. That is to that is related to man's eternity. After this, then it's a matter of、uh, ability or power that can save us from all kinds of difficulties. Too often, we tend to people's needs first and neglect the importance of the matter of their sins needed to be forgiven. The power without authority is lawlessness. We must bring people to God first, so they can see their true condition. Without the forgiveness of sins, they could not experience God's power. This paralyzed man was carried by his friends to Jesus. Jesus not only forgave his sins; he also commanded him to arise and walk. 
He then arose and took up his mat and went home. How do we apply this truth? What is your mat? Mat is something that lets you feel comfortable, rested, or even something you rely on. But because you you rely on it more and more, this mat then become your limitation, that you can only sit. On your mat all day long, maybe it's your hobby. You feel comfortable with it. Gradually, you become addicted in it. Eventually, you cannot live without it. So you sit on your mat all day long. Or maybe it is your profession. You spend a lot of time and energy to become. Ah,、uh, to become an engineer, being an engineer, um. Be, um, become the way for you to make your living. Eventually, it also seem to become your limitation. Seemingly, if you leave this profession, you cannot do anything else. So you being an engineer all the days of your life. Other than this, you cannot do anything. So you are a paralytic. This man could also be the ability of your service. Jesus came to help us first, ah,、uh, to first resolve our problem of sin. Then he gave us ability. He commanded us to take up our mat. We were lying on the mat before, but he commanded us to take up our mat. Jesus did not ask us to throw away our mat. Everything that let us feel comfortable and good at, they should not become our limitations. They should become our helps. You can pick up your mat and follow God and serve God. Verse eight. Now, when the multitudes saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. The crowd saw such a paralytic can get up and walk home. They all marveled and gave glory to God. Who had given such power to men? If we take a look at Mark,、uh, Mark chapter two verse twelve, the same thing it says this. Ah,、uh, this amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, "We have never seen anything like this." They gave glory to God because they, <coughs> they saw something that's far beyond their imagination. Same in Luke chapter five twenty six. It says, and they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, and said, "We have seen remarkable things today." Of course, when men saw remarkable things, will give glory to God. But in Matthew, he said, because he had given such power to men, he of course referred to God the Father, had given such power to men. This man was. Was whom they saw Jesus. After such a great、uh, miracle, the multitude's eye was still blind. They did not see Jesus as the coming King. Seemingly a little discouraging after re-、uh, reading this, but praise the Lord. After Matthew finished the second group of the three miracles, talk about Jesus' authority. He immediately recorded of his own experience of how he was called. Maybe other, maybe others saw but did not get it. But here there was a sinner. He saw it and he got it. Verse nine, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew. Sitting at the tax collector's booth, and he said to him, "Follow me." So he arose and followed him. Matthew was very humble. He just used one verse to describe his own experience of how he was called. How much emotion was there that he did not mention? Jesus did such a miracle and told the crowd that he had the authority to forgive sins, but the multitudes did not see and thought God gave a、uh, gave authority to a man. Matthew saw it, and Jesus also saw Matthew. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man that Saul was、uh, gazed upon. We don't know how long Jesus had gazed upon Matthew. 
Jesus, with his keenly observant look at him, he immediately saw through his heart. Matthew was a tax collector. He was an open, ah,、uh, openly considered as a sinner because they often blackmailed their own people in tax collection, and they live a lavish, ah,、uh, lifestyle. Matthew had been a tax collector for many years, and this job had become his mat. Just like that paralytic could not leave this mat, he's even worse than the par- par- paralytic because everyone knew he's a sinner, and did not like to be with him, and all despised him. But Jesus came by him, and he was sitting at the tax collector's booth. Jesus gazed upon him and saw his helplessness, saw his regretfulness. He also wanted to be able to leave his mat. Not sure how long Jesus looked at him, and then he said, "Follow me," just like Jesus said to the paralyzed man, "Arise and take up your mat and go home." That paralytic arose and went home, as Jesus said. Now Jesus said to Matthew, "You follow me." What a great gospel this is to Matthew. He's a sinner. Jesus forgave his sin. Not only so, Jesus even called him to follow him. So he arose and followed Jesus. Just this one verse, but it it was full of profound experience. A very rich tech. Tax collector with comfortable lifestyle, he got up all he gave gave up all this because of Jesus' call to him and follow Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, are you still sitting on your mat, living live a very comfortable life and did not want to live yet? Let's pray. Lord, before we know you, we were all like that paralyzed man. We wanted to do good, but we could not. We wanted to follow you, but we do not have the motivation, Lord. But you come and you call us personally. You forgave our sins and you commanded us to get up and follow you, Lord. Help us, give us, give us faith that we can answer your call. Bless my life today. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen.